Well, many of us dream about the day we can hang up those work clothes for good, but how prepared are you to actually make the transition into retirement? Here to talk about that is Daryl Bryant. He's also known as Omaha's retirement strategist. Daryl is the president of D. Bryant Retirement Strategies. He also hosts his own radio show, Retirement Strategies Radio, on KFAB right here in Omaha. It's good to see you as always, Daryl. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. We are kicking off something new today. I know. Uh, where our viewers get to ask you questions. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> We're going to, right, he's not into marital advice, that kind of thing, but this is something we're going to do here on The Blend once a month. It's an opportunity for you, as if you were to ask your retirement questions directly to Daryl. Okay. Um, so we've got some common ones that I want to go through today where I feel like this is where the bulk of the benefit is going to go to the people watching. Sure, okay, um, let's go. And the first common question is this, will my cost of living decrease when I retire? Uh, great question. You know, I, I always say on the radio show, et cetera, that I, I really hate uh, generalizations. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a generalization, however, that your cost of or your yeah your cost of living will go down to about seventy percent of your pre-retirement. You know, uh, or that you're going to need seventy percent of your mm -hmm. income. I always do the budget. You know, some people will go into retirement. We've certainly seen people who have had a higher uh, cost of living at retirement than they had pre-retirement. Mm -hmm. That's you know uh, not as uncommon as you might think. Um, just be real careful to do the math before you move into retirement and th there is a bill to pay and it's and, you know your lifestyle bill every mm -hmm. month so it's I, I, please don't use a generalization to do that um, so count the cost of what you're gonna do what am I gonna do for recreation uh, sure some things are gonna go away maybe the dry cleaning bill and so forth and maybe uh -huh. some fuel expense and that sort of thing may go down you might be able to go to one car yes you can begin to curb some expenses but others you'll find yourself with more time on your hands and then you'll want to fill that uh -huh. Uh, and as I say around the office, unless you're going to go play frisbee golf, right. which is free, then uh, you're going to uh, incur yeah. some expenses and maybe that you didn't too, have before. About travel, you know, a lot of people want to be able to do that when they they retire, and those trips can be expensive. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. our next common question that I know you hear a lot, <laughs> you get okay. this one. I've still got a mortgage payment every month. Can I mm -hmm. consider retiring, or do I have to wait until I have this paid off? Well, again, that's going to be relative to your, you know, income streams, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I would caution uh, the answer. The short answer is no, because if you can afford to make the payment with your retirement income, then of course you'd be in good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, the common question is, hey, we have seventy-five thousand dollars left on our uh, mortgage. Shouldn't I just go ahead and pay, you know, pull dollars out of our savings and pay that off so that I don't have any? payment going uh -huh. to the retirement. That, that's a legitimate question because we all like to be free and clear and feel, have that feeling. Mm -hmm. And I'm a cash and carry, you know, kind of guy. So I, I, I'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. However, two things, don't pull dollars from a qualified plan, IRA 401k, which would be a taxable event mm -hmm. in order to pay off a tax deductible right. expense, number one. Number two, don't reduce your liquidity by paying off that mortgage Okay, you're going to pull you're going to pull seventy five thousand dollars out of savings from somewhere. Well, now you have seventy five less cash laying around. Everybody mm -hmm. knows cash is king. Right? And not knowing what life could hold. That's exactly where you right. Would need you might, that money. Yeah, you might need the uh, mm -hmm. certainly might need those dollars. So you know a couple things that you'd really want to uh, keep in mind. Also, you're not going to reduce your uh, your mortgage payment to zero just mm -hmm. by paying it off because you still have taxes and insurance. Some people will forget that and say, oh, that's right. It's just going to uh -huh. reduce my, by a little bit. Right. Okay. Okay, so our next question, yeah. another common question. I'd like to roll over my 401k into an annuity. Is there a certain age requirement to do this? Uh, typically, uh, what you find with most plan, with, this is a plan document thing. Mm -hmm. This is not a federal uh, thing. What we're talking about here would be people that are still working. Naturally, if you're not working, you can roll your 401k to any IRA. You know, after you, se you know, after you separated any age. Mm -hmm. But if you're still working, there's typically a plan document thing, not federal law. Plan document with the company that you work for that will have uh, requirements that you have to meet before you can move dollars out while you're still working. Typically there's a 59 and a half rule, mm -hmm. right, before you can, uh, ev in other words, hey I'm 60 years old, I'm right. still going to work for six or seven more years. I'd like to roll this however and self-direct, whether it's to an annuity or you know, uh, you know index funds or whatever the case might be, uh, then yes, typically 59 and a half. There are many um, plans, however, that we work with. We work with Kellogg's and Conagra and Valmont and so forth. Uh -huh. There are many plans that allow a pre-59 and a half withdrawal provision uh, as well. So, okay. uh, and also with regard to annuities, be real careful. If you're going to use an annuity, nothing wrong generally with an annuity. Uh, as a blanket statement, I, w I don't like generalizations, but I will say I'd be very cautious of any variable annuity because you're going to find that your expenses are going to go straight up mm. uh, when you uh, if you do that. So, okay. yeah. well, Daryl works specifically with people who are in this um, red zone. We say five to seven years. <laughs> 
out from retirement. Yep. So maybe you've been working with somebody who's managing your money, but now it's time to transition. But you've got a question for him. Ask the strategist. Um, you can email questions to questions at omahasretirementstrategist.com. Try to keep your questions brief. Be sure to include your name and your phone number. Daryl may answer your question right here on air next time. In the meantime, if you want to get a copy of Daryl's report, it's called Five Steps to Retirement. You can call right now and he'll get a copy to you. The number is 402-932-2141. And back to that retirement red zone, really the best way to start is with a one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. um, visit with his office. And you can set that up by calling 402-932-2141. What do you need to have when you're going in for that initial visit? I think a lot of people might be anxious about, do I have enough documentation? Is this going to be productive? Yeah, uh, certainly it's going to be productive. The first uh, meeting that we have, uh, Mary, is going to be just generally just kind of a get to know you. We're going to get to know each other, make sure it's a good fit. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we, the way we phrase it is just throw your stuff in a box or mm -hmm. grab your retirement files or whatever has to do with your finances. Uh, that would be statements on 401ks, IRAs, uh, probably a recent social security statement would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, but don't get too hung up on every little detail. The most important thing is to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll know a lot of the answers if you just have your statements and so forth. In other words, uh, Sydney and Beth at the office are, are typically going to say, what have you done so far to prepare for retirement? Well, that would be the things you know that you'd want to bring right. in. And then we'll just get to know each other and, and uh, uh, just start the process. Mm -hmm. I think fear, yeah. um, probably a lot, of, a lot of people haven't taken that step yet just because they're afraid. Yeah. They're like, I don't, I don't know all the answers. You don't have to. No, no. <laughs> that's why that's Daryl's here. And that's why he comes on here every Monday is to, to answer our questions throughout the, the course of this relationship so far. It's what Mike and I have been asking him. Now it's your chance to get your questions to Daryl. Um, and we appreciate seeing you as always, Daryl. You betcha. Thanks Thank for you.